In this video, let us learn about the internal features of the medulla oblongata at the level of sensory decussation. Now, after crossing, these dorsal column pathways will form the medial lemniscus. So, the decussation is also known as lemniscal decussation. So, to study the internal features of the medulla at the level of sensory decussation, the medulla is sectioned at the level shown here. Let us see its features now. So, this is the outline of the medulla at this level. Please practice drawing these diagrams. It shows the ventral median fissure on the ventral aspect and dorsal median sulcus on the dorsal aspect. There is a central canal surrounded by the central grey matter. Note how the central canal is slightly shifted dorsally. On the ventral aspect, on either side of the midline, we have a large collection of fibre bundle known as pyramids, which contain both corticospinal and corticonuclear fibres here. At the level of pyramidal decussation, the pyramids contained only corticospinal fibres, whereas at this level, they have both corticospinal and corticonuclear fibres. The corticonuclear fibres will relay in the various medullary nuclei at this level. On the dorsal aspect, slightly removed from the central grey matter, on either side of the midline we find nucleus gracilis, more laterally we find the nucleus cuneatus. Both these nuclei will have become much more larger compared to the nuclei at the level of pyramidal decussation. Now the, this is where they will result in the formation of the gracile and the cuneate tubercles on the dorsal aspect of medulla. <coughs> Lateral to the nucleus cuneatus, we find a new nucleus here that is known as accessory cuneate nucleus. We will talk about it in the next part. Further laterally, we have the spinal nucleus and the tract of the trigeminal nerve. Let us first discuss the sensory decussation. As we know, the fasciculus gracilis carries the fibers or the information from the sacral, lumbar and lower thoracic segments. And these fibers relay in the nucleus gracilis. The fasciculus cuneatus carries information from the upper thoracic and cervical segments and they relay in the nucleus cuneatus. Axons of the neurons of these nuclei will proceed around the central grey matter as internal arcuate fibers. They cross in the midline at the sensory decussation and collect on the opposite side to form a flattened bundle of fibers known as medial lemniscus. Now see the position of the fibers. We had discussed this in detail in the video on dorsal column pathway. The sacral fibers which are the medial most in fasciculus gracilis or in the nucleus gracilis, after crossing they occupy the anterior most position in the medial lemniscus. The cervical fibers which are the lateral most in the fasciculus cuneatus and nucleus cuneatus after crossing, they occupy the posterior most position in the medial lemniscus. That is the typical namaste position as we had discussed earlier. Now, some of the fibers which are carrying proprioceptive information from the upper limb, that is from the cervical segments, they will relay in the accessory cuneate nucleus. Now, these are involved with conveying the non-conscious proprioceptive information to the cerebellum. The axons of the neurons in the accessory cuneate nucleus exit as posterior external arcuate fibers, collect together to form the cuneocerebellar tract, which reaches the cerebellar cortex through the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Now coming to the white matter in the medulla at this level, Along the lateral margins, we find the posterior and anterior spinocerebellar tracts. On their inner aspects, we find the lateral and anterior spinothalamic tracts and various other ascending and descending tracts of the spinal cord, that is rubrospinal and vestibulospinal tracts, as well as the spinotectal, spinoolivary and spinovestibular tracts. Now, between the central grey and the medial lemniscus, on either side of the midline, we have the medial longitudinal fasciculus and tectospinal tracts which are positioned just anterior to them. Now these two bundles of fibers will maintain the same position throughout the rest of the brainstem at the higher levels. 
Now coming to the grey matter, within the central grey we find the beginnings of or, or the lower ends of some of the cranial nerve nuclei. So anterolateral to the central canal we find the hypoglossal nucleus, lateral to the central canal we find the dorsal nucleus of the vagus, posterolateral to the central canal we find the nucleus of tractus solitarius. Now hypoglossal nucleus supplies the ipsilateral muscles of the tongue, it belongs to somatic efferent column. Dorsal nucleus of the vagus belongs to general visceral efferent column, it supplies preganglionic parasympathetic fibers to the viscera in the neck, thorax and abdomen. Nucleus of tractus solitarius belongs to both general visceral afferent column and the special visceral afferent column. So it receives sensations from the viscera as well as taste sensations. The area outside this central grey matter is occupied by the reticular formation. Now within this reticular formation, medial to the spinal nucleus of trigeminal, we find the nucleus ambiguous. Now this belongs to special visceral efferent column. Its neurons will supply the muscles which develop from 3rd, 4th and 6th pharyngeal arches. Posterior to the pyramids, we also find the lower ends of the inferior olivary nucleus and medial accessory olivary nucleus. Both of them will be found in the inferior olivary nuclear complex which is better seen at the higher level. So the main features at this level will be definite enlarged gracile and cuneate nuclei within which the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus fibers will relay. The second order neuron fibers will then travel around the central grey matter cross to the opposite side at the sensory decussation to form what is called as medial lemniscus. Now the second feature which we are seeing here is within the central grey matter as well as within the reticular formation we see the beginnings of some of the cranial nerve nuclei. So within the central grey matter we find the hypoglossal nucleus, dorsal nucleus of the vagus and nucleus of tractor solitarius and within the reticular formation we find the beginning of the nucleus ambiguous. The rest of the white, white matter will be occupying the same position as we had seen at the level of pyramidal decussation. However, the medial longitudinal fasciculus and tectospinal tracts have moved to the area between the central grey matter and the medial lemniscus and now they are arranged on either side of the midline. This position will be held by these two tracts throughout the upper parts of the mid brainstem. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please visit the site for other neuroanatomy videos. Thank you.